Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I hope you guys are doing well. I have some very bullish news for you. We have a congressman that has bought Dogecoin, Ethereum, and Cardano. It seems the number of politicians holding crypto keeps increasing week over week, month over month, and so on and so forth. And a huge partnership between Wall Street crypto investment firm NYDIG and Allied Payments opens up Bitcoins to lots of people. Allied is a huge payments provider, so I'll break it down and tell you about the details there. Also, we have a $55 billion hedge fund that is looking to enter the crypto market. And CoinShares, which is a crypto company, they have purchased an ETF business. This is huge. I think they may be looking to jump into the crypto ETF uh, uh, movement here. We know the SEC has been sitting on their asses with the Bitcoin ETF. But I'm going to break down a few things. And Ernst & Young has uh, is doing something big with Ethereum. So we're going to go through all of that, guys. Before we get into it, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, this video is brought to you by OKCoin, OK which has the lowest fees around. Why pay high fees? Save your money. Use that money towards more assets or just save your money and put it in the bank. Whatever you want to do but at least don't pay high fees. Sign up with OKCoin, link in the description. Also, please don't forget to sign up for my free weekly newsletter, 100% free crypto insights and knowledge. Now, uh, the Bitcoin market, well, I should say Bitcoin as, as you know, which leads the market, What's happening right now as far as performance? Well, the data still shows that we're bottoming out in this respective correction. Here, Will Clemente uh, highlighted this in this updated chart saying another Bitcoin bottom signal. SSR has only dipped below the lower band during 2018 capitulation, March 2020 crash, September 2020, and now. So I think we uh, are going to go upwards. There's still another leg in this bull run. That's my opinion. Could I be wrong? Of course. You know, if I were to map this out from a percentage standpoint, because we're talking probabilities here, not certainties, I would say 70% uh, that we have another bull run left and 30% that we move sideways for a while. And who knows, maybe we go into a bear market. You know, I can't with 100% certainty say, hey, guys, this is guaranteed. The next the bull run is going to happen again. And here's the date. No one can do that. Right. But we can look at the data and try to come up with a thesis here. So that's what I personally think. And that's what a lot of the data shows. Now, check this out. U.S. Congressman buys Dogecoin, Ethereum and Cardano amid bull market. Uh, Alabama Congressman Barry Moore has purchased a range of cryptocurrencies in recent months. According to current prices, he's down on all of his crypto investments so far. So uh, along with everybody else, but it just depends on his entry price, honestly. Uh, so Alabama Congressman Barry Moore has been buying Dogecoin, Ether and Cardano in recent months, according to trading disclosures filed with the clerk of the House of Representatives on July 2nd. Specifically, on May 5th, Moore bought Ethereum, uh, followed by three purchases of Cardano on May 10th, 11th, and uh, 13th, before buying Dogecoin on June 13th. The disclosures do not specify how much of each coin Moore invested in, but the range, but give a range of $1,000 to $15,000 for each purchase. That means he bought between $5,000 and $75,000 in total. Now, a couple things here, guys. One, this is very bullish. I don't care about if he's Democrat or Republican or whatever it else, because we are seeing more and more politicians are buying crypto. I mean, I've interviewed the mayor of Miami, the mayor of Jackson, Tennessee, both who are bullish on crypto. We know that Senator Cynthia Loomis out of Wyoming, she's a big Bitcoin holder and believer. So we are just seeing across the board the move towards uh, crypto, the migration, right? It's happening from uh, Wall Street institutions to corporations to politicians. And uh, I think soon we're going to see some really solid crypto regulations. So if you don't see what is happening here and it's happening on all fronts, there's there's just a move towards crypto. And that makes me bullish that I know that uh, we're going to head to mass adoption. We're not there yet. And higher prices will follow that. Now, this news is very bullish here, guys, because NYDIG, keep your eye on this company. Just a couple of weeks ago, um, or maybe just 
not even a couple of weeks ago, uh, just a week and a half ago, a uh, $6 billion NCR opens up Bitcoin purchases to 650 banks and credit unions. And this was in partnership with NYDIG. If you guys have uh, been subscribed to the channel, we talked about this. They are a huge, huge investment firm out of Wall Street and obviously very big on Bitcoin. Well, they tweeted the following, together with Allied Payment, uh, the first bill pay provider in the industry to embed this service in its platform, we're excited to provide community financial institutions with a secure alternative to unregulated entities for customers to access Bitcoin. Remember, it starts with Bitcoin, then they'll go to Ethereum and go down the list, Cardano, XRP, and so on and so forth. So here's the full press release, guys. This is so huge. Um, and just given what the news that we saw about a week and a half ago with their partnership with NCR, which is opens up uh, Bitcoin and crypto to over 600 US banks and credit unions. Now they're working with a, uh, a payment network here. So let me read a part of the uh, press release. Allied Payment Network, the industry's most progressive provider of online and mobile digital payment services to community financial institutions, announced today it has entered into a partnership with NYDIG, a leading technology and financial services firm dedicated to Bitcoin. The partnership enables financial institutions to offer their customers the ability to buy, sell, and hold Bitcoin. Allied is the first bill pay provider in the industry to embed this service in its platform and offer it to financial institutions. Wow, guys. I mean, I don't have the superlatives to explain how bullish this is, right? But if you understand what is happening here, the infrastructure being built, not just for retail investors, but for banks, stock exchanges, payment providers, credit unions, whoever they are, any type of institutions, the infrastructure is being set up for both large and small. This is massive. Um, and I tell you, people who are missing what is being built and is happening here, I feel sorry for them because and if they're looking at the market from their emotions and, oh my God, Bitcoin crashed from 64 to down to 30 and they, they're running left and right, they're going to miss out on on uh, the incredible gains that are coming. Uh, and this is why I'm a hodler. I don't day trade. I just buy the dips, right? Dollar cost average and I hodl. And I'm waiting for higher prices where I'm going to cash out some. Some I will not cash out. I will hold long term. But I want to make some money, obviously, right? You, We got things we have to do. We got to live. I want to pay off some debt. I want to maybe start a business, right? I'm not going to put the money in a bank to get, uh, def you know, what do you call it, uh, get demised by inflation, I'm going to use that money and put it to work to make me more money, right? Um, so I hope you guys are thinking the same way, um, but this this is just massive news. Now, check this out. $55 billion hedge fund, Marshall Waste, exploring investments in the Bitcoin sector. This is uh, reported by the Financial Times. Here's another headline. Hedge fund giant Marsh Marshall Waste, if I'm saying that right, right, to reportedly dive into crypto. Marshall Waste is still reportedly discussing the size of its new digital currency related portfolio from potential investors. Of course they are. You better get on board. You better innovate and get on board or you will become like Blockbuster, which did not innovate and adapt to the Internet. Right. And then Netflix came along and ate their lunch. So all these hedge funds. They, they will be idiots and they will go out of business if they don't do this. And it started with Paul Tudor Jones, right? And game theory, what happened after Paul Tudor Jones? Stanley Druckenmiller came in, Bill Miller. Then we saw Ray Dalio. And uh, we're seeing more and more of these folks are jumping in. They got to diversify. They got to put their money in crypto or they're not going to make any money, right? They're not going to get any returns. And Paul Tudor Jones was the first to recognize this. So Marshall Waste, a London-based hedge fund giant managing about $55 billion in assets, is reportedly planning to make a major move into cryptocurrency and blockchain investment. The hedge fund firm is preparing to launch a dedicated portfolio targeting investments in the digital asset industry, the Financial Times reported on Tuesday. Citing anonymous people familiar with the matter, the report notes that the new initiative will focus on investing in privately owned digital finance companies working in areas like blockchain technology and payment systems for digital currencies and stable coins. They are all coming in. Just sit back and watch them all come through the door, my friends. It's happening. I think by now there should be no doubt what's, you know, 
every one of them are going to jump in, especially when you have the biggest of the biggest jumping in, right? Paul Tudor Jones is, the billionaires. So very bullish news. Um, here's some more bullish news. CoinShares to buy Elwood's ETF index business for $17 million. The purchase also gives CoinShares access to Elwood's equity research team. Many of you may remember I interviewed Melton Demures, who works at CoinShares, and uh, she's the chief strategy officer there, and uh, they're part of the crypto market doing a lot of data analysis and things along those lines and investing as well. And I'm going to try to get an interview with her again to talk about this. So it seems they're going to try to throw their hat in a ring for an ETF along with every other major investor, right? We saw Kathy Woods, ARK Invest just do that, Goldman Sachs. Everybody's trying to get a Bitcoin ETF. And I think more than one will be approved this year if the SEC can get their act together. So CoinShares, Europe's largest digital asset firm, said it uh, agreed to buy Elwood Technologies Exchange Traded Fund Index business for $17 million in shares. The ETF business has a partnership with Invesco through the Invesco Elwood Global Blockchain Equity UCITS ETF, which has more than $1 billion of assets, CoinShares said in a statement. The purchase also gives CoinShares Elwood's equity research team, which focuses on digital asset companies. Very bullish, my friends. Very, very bullish. Everybody... I, I, they wouldn't be making moves like this if they didn't see uh, that potential for ETFs to get approved and how big ETFs are going to be for the crypto market. And once again, I'll try to get an interview with Meltem. I'll put the link to the interview with Meltem in the description so you can uh, get to get more familiar with CoinShares and uh, who she is as well. Now, uh, I've said a lot about hedge funds and institutions, but check this article out. Most institutional investors expect to increase crypto exposure by 2023. This is from a study. Four out of 10 respondents said they plan to increase their crypto holdings dramatically. You don't say. As I said before, guys, game three, if they, and especially if they don't try to you know, take a position, they're going to go out of business because the money is flowing towards crypto. Crypto is a new digital uh, economy, the new tech revolution, and it's pretty clear what's happening, right? Uh, and crypto is lead along with blockchain. So big things ahead, and these companies are going to be forced, their hand is going to be forced to jump in. Now, speaking of institutional, EY, Ernst & Young, releases zero-knowledge layer to tackle increasing Ethereum costs. The tool was built to address network congestion and rising transaction costs brought about by the growth of, the de of decentralized finance, or DeFi. So can you imagine this, guys? EY, right? I mean, Ernst & Young, <laughs> it's amazing. Let, let me let me pull it pull them up here in Google so you can see the logo, maybe recognize who they are. Ernst & Young existed before the crypto market. Um, they've been around for a long time, and they're uh, a multinational professional services network, with, and they have headquarters in London and so on and so forth, and now they're helping to fix Ethereum. I mean, do you see what is happening here? Corporates are getting involved. And this is one of the reasons I'm bullish on Ethereum. You know, definitely all the building that's happening on it and the folks who are supporting it. And I think they will eventually fix their problems with this, the, the fees and all that. Um, it, it, it was the first, if I'm not mistaken, uh, smart contract platform. It had the first mover advantage. And a lot of the different features and movements in the crypto market have come from Ethereum, such as ICOs, NFTs, uh, DeFi, right? All these things were birthed out of Ethereum, guys. And uh, I don't think any other smart contract platform can say that. And, and and that's why you've even seen um, XRP, the, the developers at Ripple, they've built a bridge between Ethereum and the XRP ledger. So uh, this is big. So multinational accounting firm EY has released a layer two protocol focused on the scaling, um, excuse me, on scaling the Ethereum blockchain to bring down costs and increase efficiency. The Nightfall 3 project combines zero knowledge proofs uh, akin to the firm's previous releases in this area, the company said Thursday, Nightfall 3 aggregates transactions into groups knowing, known as rollups, designed to lighten the transaction load on the blockchain by transferring them to Layer 2. EY's work utilizes what's known as optimistic rollups, named as such because the system assumes transactions to be valid unless proven otherwise, removing the need for validation from all participants. 
guys, I, this man, it, I, I, my my bullish adrenaline <laughs> goes to an all time high when I see companies that have nothing to do with crypto are getting involved, and not only are they investing, they're helping to build the infrastructure. They're they're I mean doing things like this, right? Getting involved to help Ethereum scale. What? Right? You know they have a, uh, a you know a stake that and and uh, there, there's a level of interest here. They have a you know they're going to see return because they want to leverage the Ethereum blockchain. So very bullish, my friends. So what do you all think? You know things are moving in the right direction here. We have to be patient. Don't look at the price every hour, every minute, every every day. You will be disappointed with the volat because of the volatility. But remember, the same, it's like a pendulum. The same swings that take us very high also take us low. So I think the pendulum is swinging back to where it's low, and it's going to swing back to where it's high. But we got to be patient. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Share this video. Uh, don't forget to tell your friends and family about this channel. If you want them to learn about crypto, be educated about crypto, because we only talk about the facts here, uh, be sure to share my channel with them. I'll talk to you guys later.